extremely nervous I am right now. I first just wanted to say how humbled and how honored I am to be standing here representing the East History College of Nursing graduating class of 2015. I think today's a great day. Um, <laughs> today marks the day we celebrate and acknowledge that, that one journey is ending as another one is about to begin. And today also marks the day we aren't student nurses anymore. We're real nurses, and that means we'll also start getting paid for what we do. <laughs> a little over two and a half years ago, a committee came together, calculated, and pulled up all the points from all the applicants, and, to, and put together this amazing group of people before me that, in my own personal opinion, is considered the best nursing class that ETSU has ever seen. <laughs> As I sat down to write a speech about the tornado that, that was our life the past two and a half years, I struggled as to where to begin. So I figured I'll start at the beginning. When I heard from previous nursing students and professors tell us to say goodbye to our social lives, I laughed because I thought they were joking. They weren't joking. <laughs> I, think we, I think we all remember our first day of nursing school very clearly. I know I do. I remember I walked into class and I know, I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I remember I walked into class and thought, dude, this is pretty awesome. I'm in a classroom full of women. <laughs> now, two and a half years later, I'm thinking, <laughs> Speaking of our first day of class, though, I remember feeling excited, nervous, and ready to soak in every single word our professors were going to say and teach us. Then they started speaking. I looked around the classroom, wondering if any of my classmates were thinking the same thing I was. Are they speaking English? <laughs> Soon enough, though, we learned the language of nursing. And that nursing, nursing school is not for the people. Most of the anxiety we had at first passed as we got more into the program, but that anxiety quickly turned into stress as we dove headfirst into the workload that was expected of us. One of the first things we learned in, in nursing school was how to wash our hands. <laughs> I remember reading about washing our hands, watching some videos, and doing some online learning models about <laughs> and then we actually got <laughs> I thought to myself, this is going to be easy. <laughs> then came day two, where we had to read 300 pages, prepare for two exams, learn how to document a nursing care plan, do a case study, and write a paper, all by day three. <laughs> and this case didn't stop until just a couple weeks ago. I also think we all remember our first day of clinicals, because it was, it was the day we had all been waiting for. The day we could actually help take care of our patients. It was the first time we dealt with the headaches, the nausea and vomiting, the, the urine and loose bowels, the tachycardia, and the sweat and difficulty breathing. And that was just us before we stepped into the patient. <laughs> I remember one time during my first semester of clinicals, I had a patient who had knee surgery. And when I was doing my assessment, I noticed that my patient's knee was reddish colored. And I remember thinking, this patient obviously has an infection. How has no one seen this yet? Worried about this, I tell the instructor and ask her to come take a look. Immediately when she saw the patient's knee, she smiled and chuckled to herself and said that, that that was just the disinfectant they put on before surgery. <laughs> Needless to say, there were so many things we didn't know when we first started. But despite our initial lack of knowledge and, and the uncertainty that comes along with that, our skills and competence grew as the semesters went by. We learned more and more about ourselves and as nurses. An important thing we learned were our strengths and weaknesses in the different areas of nursing. For instance, even though I, even though I enjoyed seeing a couple births and watching the new parents hold their newborn child for the first time, I quickly discovered I was not meant to be a maternity nurse. <laughs> it may have just been me, but I felt uncomfortable, uncomfortable trying to explain to a woman how to breastfeed her newborn child, <laughs> especially with the father standing right next to me. <laughs> Suddenly you start looking at people around you in a different light. You start checking out the size of the person's veins ahead of you. <laughs> you start diagnosing someone with Parkinson's by the way they walk. If you see someone who has swollen ankles, you think they have a heart condition. You wash your hands for a full minute while in public restrooms and turn the faucet off with your elbows. You 
start diagnosing yourself with every disease complex you learn about in class, and every one of your family members and friends begins to come to you with the slightest ache, pain, <laughs> symptom, or injury, only expecting an assessment and diagnosis. Well, for those of you who want to know what your diagnosis is, here it is. TMI. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, in all seriousness, though, we have all grown and learned so much over these past two and a half years. To our faculty, we thank you for mentoring us and helping us succeed. We know we weren't always the easiest to deal with, especially on exam days, where we complained about how all answer choices, A, B, C, and D, were all correct, and then trying to convince you the next day that answer A was better than C. <laughs> but you were always there for us, encouraged us, and helped shape us into the nurses moving tomorrow. We would also like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to go into hospitals and clinics under, under your license. Seriously, you should see some of our test scores. <laughs> <laughs> to all of you here, our friends and family, we know we did not and would not have made it to this moment on our own. Thank you for standing beside us. Thank you for letting us use you as our practice victim. Thank you for letting us miss family dinners and other special occasions as we locked, our, as we locked ourselves away studying. We could not have done this without your love, your sacrifice, your support, and your encouragement. All of you here, you encouraged us, and you pushed us to keep going when we felt like giving up. And for that, we are thankful, because we all made the decision to stick with it, and now we, and now we are here today. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you, and we love you. To my fellow classmates, where do I even begin? It doesn't seem real that this journey was just beginning two and a half years ago. Many of us locked into orientation, not knowing a single person. But over the past couple years, we have studied together, worried together, struggled together. Some of us may have even cried together. But now, finally, we have all succeeded together. And I can honestly say, with all sincerity, that I think of you all more as a family than as classmates. Although our nursing journey could be described as a time of stress overload, sleep and exercise deprivation, social isolation, unbalanced nutrition, hysteria, and delirium, as evidenced by being an ETSU nursing student. <laughs> these, trials and these trials and tribulations have given us the confidence, courage, strength, and wisdom we need to become incredible nurses. And there are no other people I would have gone through all this with than each of you. We came to ETSU knowing very little of what we would become or what we would accomplish. But we are leaving with knowing who we are, and that is a gift to be treasured. As I mentioned earlier, we have learned so much over, over the course of nursing school. But I think one of the most important things we have learned though, is about compassion. I think, this, sorry, I think this to be one of the values of utmost importance to have when being a nurse. And I, can def, and I can confidently say I've seen this in each of you. Whether we're staying here in the Tri-Cities, or moving to a different part of Tennessee, or to a different state, or on the other side of the world, we as nurses will make an everlasting impact every single day in the lives of our patients, their families, and in our communities. When people describe a nurse, you don't typically hear the words overworked and underpaid. Instead, you typically hear the words compassionate, caring, advocate, responsible, and hardworking. One could also describe a nurse with the word empathy. Empathy is defined as the power of understanding and imaginatively entering into another person's feelings. Empathy, however, is not best described in words, but rather in the actions of a nurse. Empathy is a nurse who takes his or her profession seriously with their patients' lives in their hands and who double checks their work in order to deliver safe, professional, and holistic care. Empathy is a nurse who learns to hide the nauseated look on their face they so desperately want to make as they change a dressing, empty a drain, or clean up the patient who has C. diff. Empathy is a nurse who comes home after a long, and tired on 12 to 13 hour shift, and cooks, and cleans, and takes care of his or her family despite their exhaustion. Empathy is a nurse working at 12 to 13 hour shift, and forgetting to eat, or using the bathroom, because they place their patient's needs above his or her own. This kind of nurse views nursing, not as a job or a task, but rather as a service to others, to ensure their patients have the best quality of life possible. And I had no doubt in my mind that each of you is this kind of nurse. Nursing is a noble profession unlike any other. As our dean mentioned in her speech, nurses have a voice. And now, we, the ETSU College of Nursing class of 2015, we now have a voice. As nurses, we must remember we have the amazing opportunity to make a difference in someone else's life every single day we go to work. 
How do we impact the lives of our patients? We impact their lives by using our voice. Nurses have influence in their voice, and when we use it, we can change the course of someone's life. In school, we've heard it been said that nurses don't feel like they have a voice, and that nurses don't feel like they can bring about change. But there are around 800,000 physicians here in the United States, but there are more than 3 million nurses. Just imagine what all we could accomplish and do if we all got on the same page. Creating a healing environment for our patients and a healthy work environment for each other. There wouldn't be anything we couldn't do. Whether or not we choose to use our voice, that's up to us. But working together, we will allow our voices to be heard clearly. And together, we will not be ignored. In her speech, one of the questions she asked was, what change would you like to see in the world? I'm sure everyone in this room has a different answer to this question. When I think about this question, I can't help but immediately think about one of my favorite quotes by Gandhi, which says, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. I'm sure most of us have heard this quote before, but what exactly does it mean? To be the change means to want, to choose, and to commit our actions to whatever we want to see changed. In order to do something, we have to want it. And if we really want it, then we will endure all the struggles and pain that come along with it. A change can only happen if we want to see it happen and are willing to put forth the effort. Nothing will change if we don't do anything. To take action or to just sit there. At the end of the, at the, end of the day, the choice was and is ours. The world could be described as a mirror. It reflects back at us what we are being today. So what do we want to see in that mirror? I think most of us would say we want to see people's hearts. We want to see people's authenticity. So we have to be what we would like to see. Because if we don't do that, then we won't see that. We must use our voice, and we must be the example first. Others won't follow suit unless we do something first. And we as nurses have a responsibility to our audience. Our audience being our patients, our patients' families and their friends, and our own communities. Are we going to feel like going into work every day? Definitely not. But whatever our mood may be, whatever troubles may exist in our lives, when it's time to perform, we have to be over it as soon as we step out on that stage. Otherwise, there is no show for our audience to see. If we want to see change, we must be willing to continue to fight and keep going on in the face of adversity. If we want to see change, we must use our voices. Whether that's through our words or through our actions, however we use our voice, change will only, change will only come when we step up and fight for what we believe in. In closing, to the ETSU College of Nursing graduating class of 2015, again, it has been a true honor of going through nursing school with you all. I am so excited to see all the ways in which each of, in, in which each of us is going to impact the world. The world has truly gained some of the best nurses ever. And as Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. My hope for each of you is that your patience will never forget you. As we leave here and go out into the world, may we remember to speak with compassion and love. May we bring comfort where there is pain. May we encourage when there is hopelessness. May we use our hands that we have developed that move to heal. May we use our hearts that we have developed that care for the broken. May we use our ears that we have developed to, to hear what, what is unspoken. May we use our eyes that we have developed to see what may be hidden. We, now, now as nurses, are the voice of the voiceless. We, now as nurses, are the advocates for those who can't advocate for themselves. We, now as nurses, are the helping hands in our communities. And we must know and believe that by helping one person, we are making a difference. We will be making the world a better place, one person at a time. And we each are going to be everything that a nurse is and that a nurse should be.